Welcome back to Caffeinate Math. Today's lesson is brought to you by Finland. Today we're going to dive into geometry. And I want to address this specific question. What's the point? Why do we make high school students study it? What good is it gonna do you? If you took a poll of high school students, I'd be willing to bet that most would call geometry pointless. I mean, just learning about shapes and doing proofs? Boring. But some could argue that geometry, it's what makes the world go round. But to really understand why geometry is important, we need to go back in time to ancient Egypt. Come join me as we explore where geometry began and why we need to study it today. The origin of geometry lies in the concerns of everyday life. Oh, so true. In fact, in the ancient world, there were a lot of ways to use geometry. The ancient Egyptians lived near the Nile River because it was a great source of water, food, and transportation. However, the dang thing would flood every year, which was great for the soil and crops, but it wasn't so good for keeping track of whose land was whose. Every year after the flood, they'd have to reestablish their property lines. They'd have to remeasure their land. And this, actually, is where we get our word geometry. The first part, geo, means earth. The second part means measurement. Geometry started because the ancient Egyptians needed literally, to measure the earth year after year. And in addition, they needed to be able to calculate volumes for the grain and oil that came from the earth. And the Egyptians, wow, they built things, big things like dams, and of course, pyramids. Geometry was a very essential skill for them. And by the way, they didn't have the modern geometry tools that we use today. They had to get creative. For example, they had a specific way to find right angles. How do you think they did it? Did they use rope, the stars, stone blocks, or bones? If you said rope, you were correct. To find right angles, they would use a rope with 12 knots tied in it. That was their protractor. But now it's time to move on in history and we need to jump to about 1550 BC. Now thankfully throughout the years, as they learned, they would write down the things that they had learned. One of the most complete of these documents is called the Rhind Papyrus. And in it was formulas for the volumes of their granaries and also area formulas for circles, triangles, rectangles, trapezoids, and the way to calculate the slopes of the pyramids. Now this is just a short stop in history, but I wanted you to see the first geometry textbook. So we're gonna move on, jumping now to 580 BC. And now we find ourselves in Crotone, Italy. There was this group of intellectuals known as the Pythagoreans, and they were led by this fellow, Pythagoras. These fellows discussed all kinds of things, but they loved math. They believed, and rightly so, that all things are, or are related to, numbers. They said that numbers were the key to interpreting the universe. And thanks to them, we now know that, well, the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees, and that the sides of a triangle, when squared, add up to the hypotenuse squared. The bad news, though, is that Pythagoras, he wasn't a fan of writing things down. So we have very little record of their work. The good news is that Euclid was only a few hundred years away from joining our story. And this is Euclid. He is the rock star of geometry. Remember all that stuff that Pythagoras didn't write down? Well, Euclid did. He wrote a systematic defense of the whole subject, or as much as they knew so far. It's called Euclid's Elements. You just can't underestimate how important this book was. People were blown away by it. You could say it went viral. 
But why? Why didn't the Ryan's papyrus go viral? Well, Euclid's Elements, it was the first of its kind. Euclid put together a foundational document for geometry. It was an organized explanation that included very logical arguments and proofs for all their underlying theories. It was so amazing. It was required reading for all university students for centuries. In fact, for 2000 years, you weren't actually considered an educated person unless you had read and understood Euclid's elements. Once the printing press was invented, Elements was the second most printed book, second only to the Bible. And finally, it inspired a lot of other scientists and philosophers to create their own elements. It's time for a pop quiz. What famous person kept a copy of Euclid's elements with him as he traveled on his horse? Was it Galileo, Leonardo da Vinci, Napoleon, or Abraham Lincoln? And the answer is Abraham Lincoln, who lived 2,000 years after Euclid. Now let's go back and answer the question that we began with today. In our modern day, what's the point of studying geometry? I mean, I get it. You may not care that two triangles are congruent or that triangles have perpendicular bisectors, but remember, the origin of geometry lies in the concerns of everyday life. I mean, aside from building a world that works, parallel parking, or playing a legit game of pool, geometry also teaches us how to build a foundation of thought, how to defend a position or theory, or just prove stuff. These are skills that you can develop and use for anything in life. And that's the point.